Are you looking to start an autograph collection? Well, I've got four tips and four hacks that will help you on your way. Hey guys, it's Josh the 90 Know It All coming to you today once again with the four hacks and four tips I got for you if you're looking to start an autograph collection. But guys, before we do that, can you go down below, hit the like button, leave a comment on some tips or hacks that you have for getting autographs, and subscribe to the channel. It does help me out and it really is encouraging. So guys, let's jump into this right off the bat. You know, everybody you know who is following sports, getting an autograph is kind of cool, especially for a fan. You know, there's a lot of us who collect. I've been collecting since I was a kid. But there are some things that I've learned as an adult that I wish I would have known when I was younger. Now, one of the biggest things that, you know, you got to think about it is what you're going to have signed. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But a lot of people like to get the cards signed. Obviously, I love getting cards. I've got a whole book full of autographs. But a lot of the cards nowadays are, are glossy. they got the Bowman Chromes that really have... Um, almost this this covering on it that causes a lot of markers to be uh, smeared if you touch them too soon especially like even the sharpies it does it you know back when I was a kid every card was cardboard and as soon as you signed it it was it was pretty much done so I want, I want to give you guys a couple tips to help out with those type of cards to kind of lessens the amount of smearing that you would see using a sharpie uh, just little things like that. So the first thing I have for you is baby powder. If you got one of the chrome cards, you know, that's nice and slick, put a little baby powder on it and just kind of spread it around and kind of rub it in. It actually helps. It, it actually made a big difference. I didn't realize this till a couple years ago because I kept having cards smear and, and someone else was like, hey, use a little baby powder and just kind of touch it on there, spread it around and it makes a big difference. And I tried it and it did. I actually tested it, you know, for a long time you know, different things, seeing how well it worked, and, and it worked really well. But sometimes you don't have baby powder, and, you know, you need something else. So tip number two is if you have an eraser, just a pencil eraser, the rectangle ones work, work really good, rub that across it, and that also helps to, I don't know, just cause a little more friction, a little more spots on it, so it's easier uh, for the pen to not spear and just kind of stick there better. Now, if you don't have those two things, you can also just kind of take your finger and kind of rub it against it for a little bit. Uh, just, you know, just back and forth like that helps out a little bit. Uh, but the baby powder and the racer are actually the two best things I've found. Now, tip number three kind of deals with this stuff as well. Now, I took a card and I just threw my name, my little autograph on there. Now, I actually had a player one time. They were signing their cards and then without even thinking about it, they signed someone else's card. And after they did, they were like, oh, man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. And I was like, oh, no problem. The card they signed was a glossy card like that. And I knew, because I actually learned this when I was a youth pastor, when kids would take Sharpies and write on the whiteboard, that if you took a dry erase board marker and went go across the part that was written in Sharpie, if you want to erase it, if you just go, keep going across it, keep going across it, I think this this pen's kind of dying, but you do that, and then you take just a cloth and rack. See, I kind of see if you can see it. I marked all this area with dry erase board marker, and then you just rub it, and it starts to come off. Now this pen was a little bit it was dying, so it's not working really good. Tried it earlier, it did work, but if you do it right away, especially if you get to it right off the bat, you can actually erase some autographs off of cards. Now I've done that a few times. Like I said. I had a player signed card that wasn't theirs, and as soon as they did it, I pulled out a dry erase board marker, went over top of it, and rubbed it right out. It was gone, and I actually had the right player sign that card later on. So that's something you can do. Um, if you get those really good, nice dry erase board markers, they work pretty good sometimes with just getting that off there. So also a tip, if you have a whiteboard, do that as well. So uh, that makes a big difference. It is nice if someone does mark on your your stuff with Sharpie. There are ways to get it out. It doesn't always work 100%, but it's, it's at least something. So, hack number four I have for you. It's not necessarily a hack. It's a little more of a tip, but at the same time, it does help. If you're going to a game and you don't have cards, uh, let's say they're minor leaguers. A lot of minor leaguers don't have cards. There are blank autograph cards that you 
that you can order online. And there are different ones. This one's like, this one says draft pick. And then you got the ones that, this is actually one of my favorite ones. I just love the color and look of that. So that one's nice. But draft pick, once again, you also got these signature cards you can use. You know, those are great for when you're going to like a minor league game and you want to get autographs, but not all the guys have cards or they're really expensive and hard to get. So that's a nice little hack. You know, Kelly, my brother-in-law and I have been using these cards for, man, probably eight years now. So they're really nice, especially when you go to, you know, like the Arizona Fall Classic where there's, it's all minor leaguers and some of the guys have cards, quite a few of them. But a lot of the guys, even some of the top prospects that don't have cards, at least not ones you can really get your hands on very easily. So having those autograph cards are great. But here's a tip. Don't use white pieces of paper. Don't use note cards. A lot of players will not sign white pieces of paper or regular notebook paper for safety reasons because they're afraid someone will steal their autograph and use it to forge things, that type of stuff. Uh, doing it on a card, doing it on a ball, things like that, it's harder for someone to forge. And so doing it on a blank piece of paper, most guys won't even sign those say, no, sorry, I can't do that. So those are the hacks. Here are four tips I have for you. First tip right off the bat, make sure you have more than one type of pen and more than one color of pen. When I go to games or events, I'm getting autographs. I always have the standard black. You never know when you might want to use that. On pretty much every card that I have signed, especially the last couple years, it's blue. Blue tends to pop out better where you can see the autograph. A lot of collectors like blue more. I personally like it as well. I, I do have some cards that are signed with red. Uh, you know, going on to spring training, we have the Cincinnati Reds and having a lot of their cards signed in red looks kind of cool. But of course, you always want the regular pen. Uh, if you have a ball, that's what you want to get it signed with. And then I usually have a silver and a gold in case something unique, like let's say I have one of those little um, ice cream helmets. The other colors don't work as well as the silver does. And the gold works well for those too. So make sure you have more than one type of pen and more than one color. Now, sometimes there's a situation where you just, you just can't do that. You, you have a pen, that's all you got, go with it. But... If you're preparing ahead of time, you have a chance to choose what you're taking with you, have a few different colors because you never know. You might get to a situation where you find something, a, a picture, a card that you didn't have that you really like, you want signed. You know, you, having different colors lets you do different things. Second thing is, you know, think about what you want to get signed and think about how much space it takes. Now, baseball cards, small, easy, put them in binders. I have one binder that probably has, I don't know, 300, 400 autographs in just a small little binder. Makes it nice. You know, a lot of guys like getting baseball signed. And that's great. I love getting baseball signed. But the problem I have is I went through about a two, three year stretch where it was baseballs, baseballs, baseballs. And now I've got three totes of balls that are signed out in my garage that I can't display because I have nowhere for them to go. I have a couple of them pulled out for my main guys that I've gotten it and liked, but for the most part, a lot of them are off being stored somewhere. And honestly, a lot of the autographs are fading faster than they do on cards, on pictures, on magazines. So I'm shying away from the balls. Um, it's just not my thing anymore. Once again, but if there are some guys who, if I meet, I, I want them signing the sweet spot. You know, if I meet Cowrickin Jr., who is my favorite player of all time, I want to get him on every 1987 Topps card that I have, as well as a ball and, and anything else I can find. But once again, think about the amount of storage space you need for the autographs you're getting. You know, cards are once again nice. They're small. They can fit into a box. You can put 800 of them in a, in a small little box and, and have them. You can slide them into sleeves, that type of stuff. I like using photos. I love having guys sign photos that I've taken. And as many of you know, I do take photographs at games. And so I love going back and having guys sign those photos, especially if there's something unique. Like I had Mike Zunino's first home run swing uh, as a professional. Uh, I have that photo. I have Chris Stratton, who was with the Giants. I have his first professional pitch. I have both of those pictures signed by those guys. So, you know, think about how much storage space you need to store the things that you're going to get signed. So if you're getting helmets, gloves, cleats, 
batting gloves, whatever it is, you got to have space for it as well. Third tip, and this one's important, be polite. These guys don't have to sign for you. They don't. They do it because they enjoy it, because they want to interact with the fans, because they want to give back to the fans. But they don't have to sign autographs. It is not in their contract that says you have to sign an autograph. So be polite. Tell the guys thank you. Tell them good luck this season. Tell them you're cheering them on. Guys like that. They have fun. Just talk to them. You know, they're still human beings. Yes, they play a sport for a living, but they just want to have fun and relax and enjoy the, the atmosphere just like you as a fan. And the fourth and final tip I have for you is let the kids go first. Let the kids go first. Baseball is honestly hurting in terms of its fan base. It's hurting. I and mean, it's just, it's obvious it is. There's not as many people going to games and all that stuff. We need to build a new generation of fans. And I will tell you, getting an autograph as a kid, whoa, that's, that's a big thing. I can still tell you to this day, the, the time that I met King Griffey Jr. In fact, if you go uh, to the site or to the, my channel, I'm not sure if it's posted yet. It might post soon. But I have this story of when I met King Griffey Jr. and King Griffey Sr. with my dad when I was a kid. And I remember that day, even to, even now. I mean, it's 30 years later, and I still remember that. So let the kids go first. And honestly, a lot of the players, they'll, they'll pay attention to that. You know, there was a couple years ago that Clayton Kershaw was signing autographs uh, up in Seattle when he was at the game. And there was a kid who was trying to get in. And I let the kid in and said, hey, come on up here. The kid got the autograph and said, hey, that's a cool autograph. You know, Congratulations. And Clayton Kershaw actually came back to me and signed a card for me because I had let the kid go first and was telling the kid, congratulations. And Clayton Kershaw came back to me. So sometimes it benefits you to let the kids go first because the guys want to sign for the kids first. You know, if they see that there's an adult who is being rude to the kids, they'll skip you. They will. They'll absolutely skip you. No doubt about that. So guys, there's a lot more tips, a lot more hacks to autographing, but these are some basic ones. Quick ones, you know, especially, once again, think about the size of the things you're getting autographed because if you want to display them, you got to have the space for it. So, guys, I'm Josh, and now you know it all. Thanks for taking the time to watch this and catch me next time because I'm going to do another video talking about the five best places and sometimes the easiest places to get autographs. Have a good day, guys.